Welcome back. You're still tuned to The Real Estate, your weekly property guide. Remember, if you have any questions or comments on the show, you can send an email to estate at cnbcafrica.com. Since its introduction in October 2001, capital gains tax, or CGT, has continued to gain momentum, especially in regards to its impact on property transactions. Despite its role in the property market, many South Africans are still unclear on how CGT actually works. Joining me in studio to give us some insights into CGT in relation to the property sector is Cheryl Howard of Cheryl Howard Associates. Uh, thank you so much, Cheryl, for joining us today. Uh, capital gains tax, as alluded to earlier, really applied from October 2001, and many are starting to be concerned about the impact on the property sector. Give us an indication on how it has impacted uh, the sector of the economy. Basically, every transaction or every property transaction is yeah. subject to capital gains tax, whether you own the property in your own name, via trust, or a, a close corporation or company as such. Um, obviously, each transaction or the transactions are subject to exclusions, though. Um, the most important one being one's primary residence. Yeah. For because this has been this conception for quite some time, the impact on, on residential on ownership. residential property, that's it. Um, basically, there's been a recent introduction of um, a limit up to the 2 million rand. So if you sell your property for um, 2 million rand or less, it's exempt from capital gains tax, regardless of whether you've made more than the 1.5 million rand um, capital gain on that. Um, basically, what happens from a primary residence, um, uh, if you sell your property over 2 million rand, the gain um, is taxed, 25% of that gain is taxed at your marginal tax rate, and that actually makes the transaction quite expensive for an individual in that the tr transaction up to 10% or 10% of the profit can be added as or is added as a, a cash cost. And what is the most that you could actually pay in terms of capital? 10%, gain? 10 in that for an individual, that's as an individual. An individual basically 25% of the gain is taxed at your top marginal rate, which is up to 10%. And what are the different, uh, different rates when it comes to, you know, apart from an individual, what about? a CC or a trust? Um, close corporations, 50% or and companies, 50% of the capital gain is taxed at um, the tax rate. So you're basically looking at a 14% tax rate with the average year of the company rate being 28%. Um, trust, on the other hand, are the most um, tax inefficient in that 50% of the gain is basically taxed at 40%. So if you sell a property out of a trust, um, you can pay up to 20% of that um, profit as tax. What about foreign investors or non-South African residents selling their property as well? Because mm -hmm. that's when the complication that's comes in. becoming, and that's quite important now at the moment. Um, as a non-resident, you technically don't get the primary, ex uh, primary residence exclusion in that um, you're obviously not resident in South Africa. There might obviously be some exceptions, if, especially for individuals who've stayed in um, the country for more than five years. Um, but it's the conveyance's responsibility now. Um, the SARS has sort of shifted the responsibility to the, co the conveyances and the estate agents to literally make sure that they collect that tax on their behalf. So if you as an individual are buying a, uh, a property from a, a non-resident, um, there's a percentage that's withheld irrespective of what the and what profit is. are we looking it's at? It's 5% um, if it's in individual's hands and then 10% for, for companies. Mm -hmm. The cost of disposing of the property, tell us about how that uh, affects the, the tax. Your the costs amount. are fortunately deductible from that side. So basically you would then start off with whatever you bought your property for, um, you add all those property transactions in that your transfer duty and your um, conveyancing cost of putting the property into your name. If you've then made any capital improvements during the period that you own the property, that's then included as part of the base cost. Um, your selling cost then, for instance, getting your electrical certificate, um, any sales commission, um, any other costs involved in advertising that sale as such um, are also deducted. So the receipt of revenue does actually give you um, some break as far as the cost of, um, of that property. Oh, you're talking about capital improvements, in other words, maintenance done on your, on your property. It's not maintenance. Okay, so so that's, instance, that's completely different. That's okay. a maintenance expense mm -hmm. as such. It's literally capital improvements. Um, for instance, you know, extension of capital, you know, it's yeah. a form of capital improvement as such. Painting, painting your house and tightening it up just before you're about to sell it, unfortunately that's not, um, not deductible. 
Okay, that's a bit of a pity because we thought that perhaps that, that could no, be excluded. That okay, side. but what about ensuring that you do have proof of all the, the capital improvements that you have made? Because I'm sure a lot of people have found themselves in very difficult situations or perhaps trying to, to ensure that they, they pay less tax. Do you think that it goes both ways? It goes both ways. Um, on, but you need to, if you're um, building your own property nowadays or doing um, alterations and improvements, you need to actually keep those records. And unfortunately, from an archiving point of view, um, it's not just for the fire year period because you might be living in the home for 15 years, um, sell it 15 years down the line and then you've got to go back and dig through those records. So I always advise my clients, keep a proper file going um, with regards to capital gains, put in your capital improvements, um, don't put it in the, you know, on the fax paper because that fades after a couple of years literally prepare a, a file that could be um, scrutinized for five years. years. No, for longer than five years than because five years. Um, for whatever the duration of holding your property is. Cheryl, what about the profits that you make uh, on, on your property, uh, given the fact that you're talking about selling your property down the line after 15 years? How, right. how is that measured? Again, that will then be subject capital mm -hmm. gains tax. If you own the property before um, October 2001, there is a pro rata in between the period that you held it before October 2001 and after. Um, but basically from October 2001, whatever that gain is up until the date that you sold it would then be subject to capital gains tax based on your exclusion, um, taking into account your exclusion rates um, and the 25% um, or the 50% mm -hmm. depending on what, what you, um, nature of the taxpayer is. And as we said, capital gains tax really applied from October 2001. Correct. What do you say to those that haven't complied or have in some way not done things correctly? You know what, it's never too late. Start. Unfortunately, there are um, limitations as to what you can do. For instance, if your property was in excess of 10 million rand, you needed to do a valuation by the end of um, September 2002, and that needed to be submitted. But you know what? It's not too late in the form of getting your titties together with regards to the improvements that you're making now. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just putting your house in order. It's yeah, never too late to start on that side. Cheryl, thank you very much for those insights. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Well, that's all for this edition of The Real Estate. Until next time, from me, Eleni Jankos, and the rest of the team, it's goodbye.